Hello friends, I'm Ron Brown. Welcome to my shop. Today I'd like to talk to you about something brand new. Uh, some time ago I recorded a DVD on how to make kitchen utensils and uh, we, did, uh, we did ladles, we did uh, spatulas, we did all kinds of things on that kitchen utensils DVD and one of the problems that I always had was in how to hold something uh, like this on a on a chili ladle or a soup ladle, how to grip it, and uh, we would do everything from grip it from the inside out to make up uh, funky jaws for our four jaw chucks, all sorts of stuff. Well, over time, I developed different ways for my own purposes to uh, to hold the ball of these uh, of these ladles. And uh, finally, it evolved into what I'm going to show you today, which is a something we're calling the Amazing Ladle Chuck. This ladle, as you see here, really is a combination of a spindle turning project and a bowl turning project. Uh, on the bigger ones, rather than have the handle run all the way around, we turn uh, the bowl first as a spindle. So if you were to look at something, let's say, like, like this right here, that would just be a sphere with a handle attached. Simple spindle turning project. In order to get the bowl, what we have to do is we have to take our spindle project and raise it up and then hollow it out, very much like we would do a hollow form. So the problem is how do you grip something like this when it gets into the larger sizes uh, securely and safely. My solution to this is a top plate that is born out of uh, our notched ring sets and our regular ring sets that will grip the bowl of our vessel securely and hold it in place so we can orient it uh, like we need. For example, Obviously this one is done, but the idea is that the plate here would grip the bowl to the point where I can put it in at whatever angle I need and clamp it down securely and then go in and do whatever hollowing I want to do. So here is the system that I've developed in order to be able to do 
all sorts of, uh, of ladles. First, we have a, a face blade, a chuck if you will, that threads directly onto the spindle. And these are available in all the, the normal thread configurations. This happens to be in a one and a quarter by eight, but we also have them one by eight. Then, in order to center up our piece, we have a centering disc here with a hole in it. So once you've turned the sphere, that will center everything up because the different bolt holes and everything center this up perfectly like so. Once we get everything centered up like we want it, we have to figure out how to hold it. And this unusual design works spectacularly well. What happened, almost by accident, is this ends up being a counterweight for the socket or for the handle and there is so little vibration you can't even measure it. So I've developed a series of these. It's a set of five and we have a two inch, a two and a half inch, a three inch, three and a half, and a four inch. So what we need to do is make sure that the ball is three eighths of an inch or so bigger than the diameter so that when we put the top plate on here it won't actually slip by the ball but it'll grip it. So as you can see here this cutout area allows room for the socket without a handle or for the socket with the handle and you can adjust the angle uh, that you want and then we would just put the assembly together use four bolts, lock it down and uh, we can hollow out uh, the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and put this assembly together uh, off camera, come back and show you what it looks like. Now in my example here, my handle's a little too big so I can't actually run this off. I'll put another one in uh, in a minute and show you how it runs. But it's not critically important that this thing be absolutely level. What is critically important is that you get it tight enough because you're hollowing a bowl essentially. So crank her down. If you want to use a, a box-in wrench or an open-in wrench on this, you can. But if it's not tight, it'll slip. So this material is really, really, really tough. So it's okay to crank on down on it uh, with the rounded over uh, edges here on the high density polyethylene. Uh, it'd be really hard to mark your, your, uh, your bowl, your turning, unless you're turning something real soft. So tighten it up, start it off slow and go. But that's it right there. So. There are going to, your, your system is going to come with the, uh, the chuck that's got the faceplate on it. It's going to come with the centering ring with the inch and a half holes, so it'll self-center uh, your sphere here. And then you're going to have four different choices uh, for the top. Let me mention something right here that's kind of important. And that is, you can't just randomly turn a sphere, I guess you could, randomly turn it and hope one of these sizes will work, but rather than do that, uh, you give, we're giving you five specific sizes, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. So our hope is that you'll make the sphere three-eighths of an inch larger than whatever you want to use. If I wanted to, for example, make a, a four-inch sphere uh, using the four-inch template, then this is going to be four and three-eighths of an inch. 
it's going to be, the sphere is going to be a little bit bigger simply because I don't want this thing to be able to go through it. So what you see here is one for the four inch ladle, one for the three and a half, this is for the three, two and a half, and two. So when I was out on the woodworking show circuit and we talked to turners all the time, a lot of them would have difficulty turning beads, which is nothing but a small sphere. And when it came time to turning a sphere, that was always this big, dark, black hole. A lot of people have difficulty turning a sphere. So this set is going to include some templates for you to turn your sphere. As you're doing your spindle turning here, uh, you'll be provided with a set of five of this, the uh, templates. And the purpose of the template is to guide you in two things. One here, making sure that you're turning a sphere. It doesn't have to be a perfect sphere, but it should be close. The other thing is this dimension here. So if you're going to turn a, uh, if you're going to use the two inch, right here, the two inch clamp, you want to turn a two and three eighths inch um, a blank. So this is two and three eighths inch wide with a center hole, and that would allow you to mark off your start, your stop, and the center. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the set of five templates, the smaller one being for the, the uh, use with the two inch uh, top clamp, it's two and three eighths. Here's two and seven eighths. Here's the one that would go with the three and a half, and so on. So you have a set of five templates. So this happens to be a blank that I'm going to grip in a four jaw chuck. And this blank would correspond to the size that we have in there. Uh, actually, this is the three and a half inch width. So what I did when I turned the spindle is I used this template to lay out my center, my left, and my right size. And then as I make a sphere out of this, this area here is for the, the socket for the handle. So as I turn this, I'll double check it with the template to make sure I'm, I'm getting close that I don't that I'm not lopsided one way or the other. So this actually has two purposes. One is to make sure your sphere is coming out the way you want it. And number two, to lay out the sphere size you need to use with the corresponding uh, uh, top plate. Just to make sure you understand what, what's included in the system, the chuck with the face plate that threads right onto your spindle, the centering ring with the inch and a half opening, and then all the bolts and stuff, and then you're going to get uh, five different size top plates. And your the five different size top plates are two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four inches. And then you're going to get also included in this system is going to be a set of uh, templates to guide you as you're turning this. There will also be this DVD, of course, uh, and written instructions. So through the magic of television, we're going to remove our handle. Actually, I didn't glue it in. But you see now that this cutout area allows plenty of room for the socket. And what we're going to do with the tool rest is we're going to set the tool rest up in here where we have access. We want to clear all these bolts and go. So here is the magic of how this works. It looks funny. There's uh, 1,122 RPMs, which is way plenty fast to hollow anything you're going to do. That's 1,500 RPMs, and there's still almost no vibration. There's a little teeny tiny bit, but uh, you can hardly tell. Most of us are going to end up hollowing this thing down around 800 or 1,000 RPMs. 
you just need to be real careful that your fingers aren't around uh, the moving object out here. Just like when you're turning a natural edge uh, bowl or anything where you're turning a lot of air. I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is to uh, spin this up by hand and make sure everything is clear. With the lobes uh, protruding like they do, it would be really easy to accidentally get into your, uh, your tool rest. And with uh, your socket, um, your handle socket out here, you could easily get into your, your tool rest here. And uh, anytime you're adjusting the height, be sure and spin it up by hand, make sure you're still in the clear. And it's easy to get in here with a bowl gouge and just hollow that out or with a scraper. So it would look something like that. And you'd be in here working like so. I've used this myself personally on a lot of different projects and it works really, really well. I would also like to tell you that you don't have to make perfect spheres. You can take something that is mostly rounded but has a flat bottom and a flat top. It does need to go past the center. And the reason for that is because you have to have something for your top plate to grip. But this could have a flat bottom and a flat top because I'm not obligated to hollow this spherically. I can go very much like you would do a cereal bowl or something like that. I can go in straight down and flat across the bottom. So this is extremely uh, versatile, easy to use. I think you're going to love it. Let me just say a word about handles. Uh, the design of the handle is completely up to you. The length, the thickness, whatever feels good. I've uh, shown you some examples here of the typical join. I like to use a half inch tenon in a half inch hole. It doesn't have to be super deep. I glue it in with uh, Tight Bond 2, which is pretty waterproof. You're not supposed to put these in the dishwasher anyway. Um, I like to use wire burners. I think it sets things off pretty well. I'm not trying to fool anybody into thinking that um, these are all made out of one piece. So a lot of times I'll use uh, a dark wood and a light wood for contrast on purpose. But the handle designs are completely up to you. It's just another quick step in the process of making your amazing ladles. I'm Ron Brown. Thanks for watching. And remember, wherever you go, there you are.